In this video, I am going to be talking about what is animal detection, what is uh, the definition of animal detection, what the types are, and how do we actually detect anomalies. So, we will cover these four things. First of all, we start with the definitions, then we will cover a bit of uh, the techniques used to detect anomalies, and then we will uh, learn about how to detect anomalies using uh, R and Python. So this is what we're going to cover in this particular lecture. So please stay till the end. You will be learning the theory as well as the applications of anomaly detection. So what is anomaly detection? Well, an anomaly detection is the process of finding outliers in, in a given data. Okay, but this is a very vague de definition, right? It doesn't tell what outliers are and uh, when outliers are good, when outliers are bad, and so on. So we will. Uh, try to understand in in bit more depth so as you know outliers are the objects that stand out um, amongst other objects in the data set and do not conform to the normal behavior in the data set so most of these uh, outliers are basically observations that are not normal or are totally different from the normal observations okay so combining these two definitions like uh, the definition of anomaly and definition of outliers which are often used interchangeably but you know there is a slight difference so anomaly detection is identification of data points events observations that deviate from the data sets normal behavior behavioral patterns okay and this is what we're going to understand and we are going to understand how to detect that abnormal behavior in the data all right. Um, it's uh, an unsupervised uh, data processing task. Okay, the detection of these outliers or uh, anomaly in the data is unsupervised. So, what is an unsupervised uh, algorithm? Well, the algorithm which doesn't use a level data, right? Such as clustering and so on, because we do not have a label data of which ones are the anomalies or the outliers. Okay. And that's very difficult. Uh, oftentimes, we will only be having data set which is totally new. We have never seen it, and uh, we have no idea of how the uh, anomalies uh, for, for that given data set uh, look like. So, in that situation, uh, the only algorithms or the type of algorithms we can use uh, are the unsupervised learning algorithms. All right. Um, well, anomaly can be very good can be very bad as well so uh, it's exactly so it all depends on the problem that we are dealing with the purpose we are trying to achieve through annual detection sometimes it could give us excellent information which will be very useful and sometimes uh, the anomaly will simply be garbage will simply be dumping um, and uh, we wouldn't be using the detected you know value sometimes they are extremely important observations and i will talk about when they are important and when they are not so important all right so here is an example of an anomaly and in a time series data so you have time series data so you know it fluctuates over times right and you uh, you see that you know there are instances where there are extremely high observations so this is a simple example of uh, how uh, an outlier looks like but um, it's not that easy always, right? Uh, we'll have multivariate situations as well. Here you just have one variable, single variable case. So this is a single variable time series case. But there are instances where we'll have uh, multi variables or um, um, you know multiple variables cases. Okay. In those scenarios, it's more difficult to detect outliers. Okay. Um, and the way you detect outliers is not just by visualization the way we have done here there are other ways also okay and there are algorithms for that as well we'll discuss about a couple but uh, you can all, always uh, you know uh, research about other algorithms like there are over 10 15 algorithms that are available some of them are open source also you can simply call them from options library and detect um, the outliers all right so there are different categories of uh, anomalies okay uh, there are a few important ones we'll be discussing here 
outliers uh, i already said that outliers are often interchangeably used um, with anomalies but there is some sort of a difference okay uh, at least in theory okay in practice though we you know kind of term them as similar um, well similar um, definition with similar definitions but they have some difference so outliers are the sort anom uh, anomalous patterns that appear in a non systematic way in the collected data so first of all the important thing is sort okay it appears for a short time and it goes away okay especially in time series data okay so that could be uh, a case of outlier uh, events are changed the patterns appear with systematic or sudden change uh, from previous known normal behavior and this duration of these patterns is usually longer than outliers. So outliers appear for only short duration, whereas events and change appear for longer duration. Okay, and that's the reason why uh, they are termed in a different uh, term, which is events or change. And then we have drips, which is much longer, like it's permanent change, long-term change in some beta, in beta. And these three are mostly applicable to time series data. Okay, uh, can be used in other types of data as well but uh, makes sense in time series data uh, makes more sense rather all right um, and then we will see how anomalies uh, appear in the real world so here's an example okay so you have a credit card and it got stolen okay and then it can be misused right by the person who has uh, stolen your car now the, the company there are many companies such as even your credit card companies or you know some payment um, payment portal such as PayPal keep track of your the uses or the pattern that uh, appears in the uses of the card right so they have the historical data historical transaction data such as transaction amount, location of the uh, transactions and so on. They can use this data to see if there is an anomalous behavior in that pattern and then will inform you through email or through your phone and then you can simply go and you know uh, block your card and so on. Okay, uh, Or even the transaction can be blocked. I mean your card company can block the transaction if it finds some uh, extreme transaction amount such as a big amount which you have never done in past or a location that is totally different or suspicious in nature so those cases are when your car company will simply block the transactions so at least you won't be losing the money okay um, and that's important because uh, because transaction can happen right like within few hours of the card being stolen and uh, it's difficult for you to inform the card company uh, uh, and it takes time right there is operational challenges that's when these algorithms automatic algorithm find this anomalous behavior in the data and takes action or take decision on behalf of you or the car company okay so here is an example right so you have like you know you let's say you always use hundred dollars somewhere between hundred dollars and all of a sudden you see a transaction of thousand dollars Right, that's anomaly. Okay, so in, in in short, if you want to understand, that's anomaly. So there are different types of anomalies. One is the global anomalies. Uh, so these are very common type of anomalies or you know data. And um, the definition is that these anomalies deviate largely from the rest of the data points. Okay, here is an example. So all the other data points are totally different from this one. Okay and uh, the way it is different is through visualization but there could be other way also right it's not just the distance i mean we are simply looking at the distance and this data point is quite far away from other um, data points but it may not be distance uh, always right there are other ways uh, in which um, a data point can be different from um, other data points okay um sometimes um sometimes not just by linearly but uh non linearly sometimes not just by you know a single variable but through multiple variables also okay we'll see a couple of these examples 
there is something called uh, contextual anomalies okay so we just saw what global anomalies are so there are also something called a contextual anomaly so so here is an example okay so this is a statement from the washington post where it says alaska just finished one of its most unusually warm uh, marches over ever recorded in its northern reaches the march warmth was unprecedented okay unusually warm okay so this is this is something used by the the editor and it is actually 59 degree fahrenheit okay but that's uh, warm in that northern hemisphere or in some uh, northern sphere of the well the northern hemisphere or uh, northern part of the uh, earth but not necessarily warm in other countries okay in countries in few countries in asia or in africa it's not too warm okay so it, it context based it all depends on the context in which we are talking about the same data point can be anomaly in some context but it is a normal observation in some other context okay so those data points are known as a contextual anomalies because the anomalies for the given context but not anomalies in some other context here is an example so uh, here is a example of time series data and most of the data points fall within some boundary you can see the confidence bound however you will see um, um, you see that there are you know there is some deviation so it's basically is a seasonal variation you see some seasonal variation and all of a sudden you see that there is a slightly there is no such seasonal variation that means it's actually dies down here okay so it is between the confidence bound which is fine so it is not very different from other observations so to say but the pattern has changed okay so it is contextual uh, anomaly then right so it's not by distance you remember we talked about the distance between observations so it's not always the distance that that decides whether an observation is an outlier or, or an anomaly or not sometimes the context matters okay so we're talking about seasonality here but all of a sudden we see no seasonality and those observations are can be termed as seasonality okay so that gives some sort of a uh, you know indication all right but uh, the important thing to remember is that contexts are almost always very domain specific okay so well this could be a financial market data okay stock market data or sales data okay so this could be like uh, happen this could happen in finance or banking uh, this could be in healthcare uh, or, or or in sales marketing such things okay and uh, it's not just algorithmically you can detect contextual anomalies you can also use your domain specific knowledge from finance or healthcare or sales or marketing uh, to detect anomalies so through visualizations through using your uh, domain specific rule based uh, algorithms you can also um, detect anomalies okay so domain is important in such cases collective anomalies is the next one so you can see that uh, here uh, observations like there are few observations which are like very close to each other they are extremely close to each other well if you actually see the distance they are not very far from other you know observations but some of the observations are just too close so individually they are not anomalies but collectively they are okay and that's the reason why they are called collective anomalies okay so this could be uh, uh, this could be typical case where you can uh, it's very difficult to find out uh, what animalies are or which are which observations are the animalies because you not just have to see whether an individual observation is an anomaly but you also have to see their collective measures okay and that's a challenge so you have to analyze the behavior in a collective fashion and that's a challenge so what are the uses i mean why do we need to detect anomalies of course we have already seen some of the uses right for instance in fraud detection right in credit card and, and so on but there are more to it okay and there are two major uses of uh, of anomaly detection so one is in healthcare 
and the other one is in defense. Okay. In healthcare, detection of early stage diseases are extremely important. For instance, in cancer, right? If you detect the cancer early, then the survival chances are quite high. Otherwise, you know, it's difficult uh, for the person or the to survive. So there are apps, these mobile apps, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence to detect anomalous behavior in your in your blood pressure, in your body temperature, and and things like that. Um, so they actually give an indication that something is wrong with you. You should go to a doctor. Okay. And then the doctors they actually use X-rays and CT scan, but they also supplement that with this algorithm-based uh, anomaly detection. They actually want to see if something is wrong, okay? And it could be right most of the times, like 99% of the times, but maybe 1% or even 0.1% of the times, certain things in your scans or in your X-ray report or in your other medical reports could be wrong, and that could give an indication. So detection of those. 0.1%, 0.01%, the small percent of these observations are extremely important. And that's where it's used. It's heavily used in defense, right? Detecting missile attack, if somebody is introducing your, uh, your signal, right? Uh, or enemy country, or, yeah, it's important. Cyber attack, chemical attack, that's where, uh, uh, so internal security of a country is heavily, heavily dependent on whether you are able to uh, detect there is anomalous behavior in, in different things, okay? Because they do not happen every day. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, 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 you know um, from like thousand cases, it could be probably once that could be a bad case, uh, which your enemy is targeting your country, and that needs to be uh, detected well in advance to be able to prepare yourself to face that situation. It's also used in other sectors, like in banks. Banks use them for fraud detection, for anti-money laundering, and so on, because that's where they find these anomalies, behavior, or transactions, and they report it to authorities, and so on. In technology, they use a lot, um, like the social media technologies, like Twitter and 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 um, uh, Facebook. They have automatic, uh, automated algorithms that detect. Any anomalous post or videos could be head crime and so on, based on certain informations. They also use for like in hardware maintenance also it's used. Like sometimes hardware are extremely important. Uh, like the servers are important. There should be uh, there should be clear indication whether the servers are going to fail and so that you can replace them well in advance. So those behavior. In the information that you get out of the systems, extremely important to analyze uh, certain events in future, and then you can always prepare yourself. So these are some of the early warning uh, area where anomalies detection is extremely important. Anomaly detection is also useful to build better supervised learning models. Now we have already said that these are unsupervised cases, right? The cases that we just talked here. But even for building better supervised models, you need to um, you need to detect these anomalies and remove them from observations to be able to build better models or to improve the accuracy of the models. What are the techniques that can be used to detect anomalies? One way is uh, to use simple statistical methods, which could be very simple ones like mean, median, more, quantiles, or you can use a simple you know, data visualization techniques um, or a more broader ap approach would be using exploratory data analysis to be able to detect uh, these uh, extreme observations or anomalies. Alright, but they are not always useful. Okay, um, in the cases of multivariate uh, anomaly detections, that means it's not just the one variable. That is contributing towards this extreme behavior. There are multiple variables. For example, there are x1, x2, x3. Together, they contribute towards the extreme observations, or together they form uh, an anomaly uh, or a outlier or an outlier. So, to identify in such situations, data validations isn't enough. It is useful, but not always 
enough. So you need to use some uh, multivariate statistics to be able to detect them. So better visualization is important. If you have three dimensional visualization techniques, that's fine to be able to uh, to be able to detect outliers in three dimensions. But anything beyond that, like four dimension, five dimension, or could be thousand dimensions, extremely difficult. Therefore, we need to be using the algorithm-based approach. Okay. Uh, and what are the approaches? One approach is uh, using machine learning based uh, techniques. One is uh, density based anomaly detection. So the idea here is that um, we use k nearest uh, neighbor algorithm, KNN algorithm. If you are familiar with machine learning, you might have heard this uh, extremely popular algorithm called KNN algorithm. So the assumption here is that the normal data points occur around the dense neighborhood. Um, and the abnormal observations are far away. Here is an example. Okay, the normal observations are very close to each other, and some of the abnormal are very far away. Okay, and uh, what do you actually uh, do in k-nearest uh, neighbor? Well, you actually uh, use your k, which could be three, four, five, ten, you know, whatever number it up to you to decide, and actually finds out the nearest neighbor. It could be 10 neighbors, 5 neighbors, 8 neighbors, depending on what the value of k is, and then you make a prediction, right? So that's a supervised learning algorithm. But here you can be you can use it as an unsupervised algorithm who is in you know, some threshold. We'll see an example uh, and, and we'll discuss more about it in uh, when we actually use it uh, in a real world situation. But uh, this is how it is used like you know, you actually see the neighborhood if certain observations are nowhere in the neighborhood then they are the anomalies. Okay, so that's the intuition here. You can also use clustering based anomaly detection algorithms. Uh, these algorithms are um, as we know the unsupervised learning algorithms. Well KNN was a supervised learning okay but we can also use clustering which is an unsupervised learning algorithms to detect anomalies. So the assumption here is that uh, the data points that are similar tend to belong to similar groups. Similar tend to belong to similar groups or similar clusters. Um, and how do you determine them? Well, you determine them to the local centroids or just by calculating the distance. Okay, and you can calculate distance not just by a single variable, by uh, multiple variables also, right? Using Euclidean distance formula or other types of distance formula such as Manhattan distance formula and so on. Uh, it's a extremely popular algorithm. So K means algorithm is used uh, to do this to detect anomalies using clustering techniques. So okay, let's see how it actually looks like. Okay, so these are observations, and so K means right. K means that means how many number of clusters we want. So K determines how many number of clusters. If it is three, we want three clusters in the data set. So that's a prior assumptions. Okay. And that's taken from your domain knowledge, your previous experience, past experience, or your experience to other models, and so on. That's something that you choose, okay? Um, or you can, you know, you can simply even try three, four, five, and see which one actually works better. So you can use multiple k values and see which one actually is the best predictor, and then choose the one that actually predicts the best. All right. So here you can see there are three clusters and their observation outside these clusters okay and that's these observations are basically then anomalies so you give the algorithm a set of a bunch of uh, data points the algorithm will simply find clusters and any data point that doesn't fall within a cluster is an anomaly okay that basically is the idea and you train the algorithm with you know all kinds of data and see at whether it actually works or not and then implement in production. Sometimes it will go wrong and then you evaluate how many times it actually uh, goes wrong and then evaluation is actually extremely important in building machine learning algorithms so it takes a bit of a time before you actually master um, this uh, you know evaluation techniques uh, so that you, know, you can simply implement good algorithms in production. To conclude, uh, we discussed what anomalies are 
and how they are used in real world some of the algorithms that can be used to automatically detect uh, animals and uh, we also saw how they can be used to make better models so animals are extremely important to be detected before building a really good supervised learning algorithm model they need to be uh, removed from the data before we can use the data to build uh, supervised learning algorithms to be really alert to alert ourselves right whether it's a disease whether it's any uneven or unwanted uh, event that needs to be uh, detected well in advance to prepare ourselves to face situations like this early warning as you have said in banks important whether it's fraud cyber security um, anti money laundering and so on so these are areas where extremely important we'll take an example and we'll use r and python to build models uh, we implement algorithms to detect uh, animals